All right, everyone, welcome to One More Game Podcast, episode one, 18 February 2022. I am The Stroke. I'm here with my good buddy, Swift Mida. Swift Mida, how's it going, dude? Is, I think your mic might be muted. <laughs> Thank you. There yep. it is. Living the dream. Living the dream. We are One More Game Podcast, or OMG, and we're excited to talk to you guys about all things gaming. Uh, we are two F-16 pilots, at least formerly, my, for myself. We love video <laughs> games. We, uh, we've been playing games since we were walking, and just because we're flying doesn't mean we have to stop playing. What are your thoughts on that, Swift? You know, I uh, love video games ever since I've been a kid, so um, happy to be here and happy to talk about it. Can't wait. Cool. Uh, I heard we got a funny story about uh, your mom. Can we make Swift's mom jokes already? Is that how we're going to start this podcast off? Oh, yeah. I feel like it's rude to her. And if she watches, <laughs> she's going to be kind of upset. But at the same time, yeah, dude. So last last night, um, I get a call from my mom. And she's telling me, hey, Chad, I joined Twitch. Despite me starting a Twitch, you know, a year ago and asking her to join. That was the <laughs> night. Last night was the night. Because my wife, Shannon, posted a, a story about this podcast so she decided to join twitch and she joined omg podcast and i was super stoked for it it was awesome she's like congrats chad now you have 10 followers and i was like well uh okay my <laughs> twitch channel has 21 followers i know it's not a lot but whatever humble brag humble brag yeah yeah super humble brag not not even um so I was like, you didn't join mine. And she's like, oh, well, how do I find you? And I was like, well, it's Swift Mida. Like, I've been telling you for a year. And so finally, she joins mine. And then she's like, okay, but how do I get back to the podcast? And so I had to do this whole thing, talk her through it on the phone. It was <laughs> excruciating. Boomers, uh, on, uh, boomers on Twitch. Yeah, she just doesn't understand the internet all that well. So yeah, it was brutal. A- it's okay. I, I'm pretty sure my parents are in here, and uh, I'm pretty sure my mom was watching some random person thinking it was me chatting with him. So we're all good. <laughs> uh, cool. We won't make fun of our, our parents too much more from here, but uh, we just want to talk about how the, these episodes are going to work. It's going to evolve over time, obviously, but um, initially, we just want to give you kind of a roadmap of what we're going to talk about in each of these episodes. So today's going to be a little bit n- different because we're going to introduce ourselves, get to know you guys. Uh, you can get to know us and figure out, you know, is this going to be a good match for us podcasters and you guys as listeners? That's right. Uh, cool. So after we talk about us, a typical episode will look like we'll bring up some, uh, some headlines, some news in the gaming industry, news about games, games coming out, uh, what we're excited for. Um, and then we'll talk about kind of what's on the horizon for, for gaming in general. Then we'll get into a major topic of the week, and we'll talk about what that looks like every week. Uh, this week, that's just going to be kind of uh, get to know us, so that'll be the major topic. But you can expect things like, uh, dude, gaming as a dad, dude, gaming as a as a pilot. Um, kind of what's dude, it like gaming with an unsuspecting schedule? Right. You know? Yeah, like <laughs> the commitments you can no longer make to this passion that you have. What's yeah. it like? What was it like for you and me gaming uh, deployed, right? Like, right. How did yeah, we yeah. feed our, our habits, our dirty habits while we were uh, <laughs> downrange? So we'll talk about stuff like that and uh, anything else that you guys bring up. You can always get, a, get in contact with us on social media, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram. All that's listed down below. Or you can email us at uh, omgpodcastgg at gmail.com. Send us your questions. We'll bring them up um, during the major topics and see if there's a some good inputs from the listeners and stuff we can talk about there. So cool. After we talk about the major topic uh, of the day, we'll talk about just what the two of us played throughout the week. Uh, we hope to bring you an episode every week yeah. and then we'll just kind of review what we played, recommend stuff for you. And then we'll just BS until you guys get tired of us. So expect about an hour <laughs> every time we do this. What do you think? They'll probably get, they'll, they'll <laughs> probably get sick of us before that, but yeah. whatever we can keep going. Yeah. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Cool. So with that being said, we'll jump into the uh, the first major topic of OMG podcast. 
Uh, gaming with the same 10 people in Korea. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that definitely happened. Uh, and if you're and not, that was awesome. If, if you're just listening to this on the podcast, we're also live on Twitch. So we've got the chat uh, along with us here. But let's get into the uh, first major topic, which is get to know who we are. Wait. All right. So, me. Well, how many different names do I have at this point? So my, my name is Aaron, but uh, I go by Taze, which is my fighter pilot call sign. Uh, so the rule for fighter pilots is if you're going to ask them what their, what their call sign means, uh, it kind of needs to be over some drinks, right? Like it should be a friendly social uh, thing, but we'll give you guys a little bit of a, a backseat Absolutely. Look, uh, into what's going on there. So um, I may or may not have been named Taze for some alleged uh, incidents I may have had or may not have had with the law at one point, uh, and then also shooting down civilian airliners simulated in uh, Korea. Uh, so that's kind of why I, yeah. I got that name for my gamer tag. It's the stroke. Uh, you know when you're like you're playing basketball or even golf, and you're just you're just stroking, just just making every whoa. shot. Oh, oh, are we keeping this? Okay. Yeah, yeah come on. Anyway, so yeah, and that, and that same thing applies to while you're gaming. So if you're just hitting all your snipes, you, you just can't miss, that's called the stroke. You're just, you're just in the zone. Uh, it also kind of is a, uh, a joke that was made about me when I was in uh, F-16B course. I don't even know if you know the Swift, but... I don't. <laughs> One day I woke up at Holloman. I go to brush my teeth. I'm going to go fly that day. Okay. And as I'm brushing my teeth, the toothpaste just starts... Running out of my mouth, and I'm just like, oh man, I must be tired. So I walk into the I'm kitchen. Very was... confused so far. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't drunk, I promise. Yeah. Uh, I walk into the kitchen, I go to drink some orange juice, and uh, I can't keep it in my mouth. So I look in the mirror, and the entire, this entire half of my face is just sagging like this. So I had what was called Bell's palsy, <laughs> where half of my face was paralyzed, and it took like a month to heal up uh so yeah kind of weird dude i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest i thought that was a like disease you had for life i didn't realize you could get over that uh are you saying that's what i still look like well i mean no (laughs) but you look fine now all right so they made the joke that i had a stroke and that's that's how that went yikes uh but yeah i guess there was no uh we never figured out the cause of that but that's kind of why i go by the stroke uh, I thought it was a good gaming name, and then also a great song, but I can't play it for you. We'll get DMCA. So <laughs> cool. Uh, and so that's me, who I am, what you can call me. Um, with that, what I do. So uh, I used to be a pilot. I used to fly F sixteen uh, with Swift. Oh, you didn't used to be a pilot. You still <laughs> well, are. I'm still a pilot, but uh, yeah. Currently, I'm flying. Uh, T-38s in Texas, and I'm kind of going through some uh, medical stuff, which we'll get into in s- into some other episodes, um, but trying to take care of my uh, self mentally, emotionally, and all that. So uh, right now, I'm kind of on the ground just doing a uh, a ground job, but you know what that means. More time for gaming. That's right. Not really. Love uh, that. Not really, because I got two kids, a beautiful wife, and a lot of uh, other stuff I got to take care of. <laughs> Anyways, so why do you care about the fact that I'm talking about video games? It's because gaming and me are like peanut butter and honey. I've been gaming since I could... Uh, you're not into that? Honey? Uh, you got to try it, dude. Yeah, I guess I do. I like jelly, but to each their own. Yeah, so my very first memory that I can that I have is me playing Nintendo and one of my parents trying to vacuum and I climb up on the glass coffee table because all coffee tables were glass in the 80s. And uh, you remember the cord on the Nintendo was like this long. Oh, yeah. And so they're trying to like vacuum under me. I'm like three years old trying to (laughs) keep playing my Mario. (laughs) Stop bothering me with your your housekeeping. Uh, So that's my first memory, man. I've been playing games. a lot of the good memories I have in periods in time in my life, it's all evolves around gaming, whether that be with my siblings. I also remember my dad and my uncle sitting down in my bed when we had Sega Genesis and playing uh, 
Jack Nicholas golf on Sega in my bed, but it was in my room. Yeah. So like they would force me to sleep while they the play. only <laughs> the only game I ever played on Sega is uh, Sonic. Yeah, that's all. That's kind of really if you think about it. The only thing that was good on Sega. But. Yeah. Cool. Overall, dude, I played I played so many different kinds of games. I'd say if I had to narrow it down, the the number one game that I played the most. Uh, oh, Streets of Rage was good too. That's true from uh, from Big Eats, but uh, Zelda, the Zelda series has probably sucked up the most of my time oh, if I include yeah. my childhood. Uh, oh yeah, even got my wife addicted. I was so proud when she beat her first Zelda game. So, uh, th- <laughs> but I like all types of games. Um, I spent a huge amount of time playing World of Warcraft and all the Blizzard games. Uh, got really serious into Heroes of the Storm at one point, but uh, it kind of brings up one of the reasons why we started this podcast. Uh, I had to learn how to balance as a dad, like what kind of games I could play, when I could game, um, and it's just a hard balancing act, which we'll talk about in future episodes. But uh, yeah. yeah, overall, that's me as a gamer, dude, as a as a pilot, and as uh, as someone who's going to be running this podcast. So let's. Uh, what about you, Swift? Okay, so um, Swift. Uh, my, name, my actual name is Chad. Um, I go by Swift because, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I have There's multiple acronyms to go so with my fast. call sign. Yeah, so fast. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> um, no, but I go by Swift for a new, myriad of reasons. Most importantly, uh, again, like Taze talked about, we can do the the beer in the bar or whatever. But most importantly, my, my call sign stands for super wacky inflatable two bar man because I'm six, four and I have, I'm really lanky. And so that's the end of that story. Yeah. Our demographics um, on this podcast are not very uh, diverse. We're both uh, yeah. orangutan pale. White yeah. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So for me, I'm still an F 16 pilot. Uh, so Taze and I met when we were in Korea uh, for the first time, we went to Korea as, as punks, which is uh, the young guys in the squadron is the bottom line there. So we were the ones making popcorn, cleaning the bar, all the things. And Taze and I, uh, or Aaron, whatever you want to call him, uh, got along immediately. We have a close-knit group of friends that we all hung out and partied with, uh, which is great. Um, and it was really cool because then Taze and I went immediately to Shaw together, which is in South Carolina. So we went to Shaw, um, continued our friendship, and then we parted ways thereafter. Uh, He moved to Texas, like he said, and then I moved to Phoenix, where I'm at currently flying the F-16. I'm doing the um, F-16B course, which is the basic course, which is where we get to take dudes who have just graduated pilot training and form them into F-16 pilots, uh, being able to drop bombs and everything, you know, just like Taze and I went through back in our day. Um, So it's pretty cool. It's really rewarding, and I I really enjoy it. Um, As far as my... Is it terrifying a little bit? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Dude, it's it's horrifying, actually. (laughs) These these kids try to... Yeah, I mean, I could tell you all kinds of stories. They yeah, they try to land before the runway. Your mom you doesn't know. want to hear this stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I do have it, a question. For, yeah. Based on your, your, your pilot history, I've always been curious what other people think about this, but do you think that your history with gaming shaped you into a good pilot? Um, dude, so I'll be honest. I never... And you, we'll see what you say after I talk, but I never had the like flight simulator or anything like that. And I, I don't know if that's negative training, but I do think that gaming from a young age maybe helped my hand-eye coordination. I also played sports, which I know you did too. So that helps as well. But I feel like just gaming in general helps hand-eye coordination. So it probably made me better than I could have been if i hadn't have gamed what do you yeah, think i kind of buy into that i think it also it's very helpful with like multitasking and keeping like a general awareness of, about your surroundings and the situation you're in in a game 
versus uh, flying. Uh, but yeah. definitely. Definitely, once you get into like the F-16 world where we were actually moving like radar scopes and stuff, all that is straight out of old school gaming. So. Dude, it's out of, out of the Atari, you know, from way back in the day. Oh, the, the cat is distracting the viewers. That's Tango. Oh, <laughs> I love that cat. All right, cool. So, yeah, I just I was curious what you thought about that. You can uh, yeah. go ahead and continue. So. Um, so dude, as far as, um, and sorry, not dude, just viewers in general, the, uh, where I started gaming, dude, I remember the first time I ever got a console is we were in, as a family, we were in Massanutten in Virginia and for Christmas and woke up that morning and all of a sudden we have a Nintendo 64 and I Loved it. I played Mario 64 a lot. I played Zelda probably more than anything. I beat it, and then I helped my sister beat it because she was scared of the, you know, dungeons. She, yeah. she was a little terrified, so I, uh, I helped water her. water temple is still terrifying. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Um, so I helped her in the scary parts. Um, you know, I grew up, I never had a Sega. I never had a, uh, until I got older, I never had a, Super Nintendo, um, but I grew up on the N64, uh, got my first PlayStation Xbox, you know, probably a couple years down the road, and it was, it was awesome, and I loved it, and then um, just continued playing. Dude, these, these days, all I do is I, I play a lot of, so now I'm on PC, which uh, Tay's actually helped me build, build, it's right behind me. Um, these days, I play a lot of, uh, well, let's be honest, a lot of Call of Duty <laughs> to, the, to the lack of, or to the detriment of my mental health. <laughs> um, I play it. I just started Lost Ark. Like, there, I play all kinds of stuff. MMOs, first-person shooters. Um, nice. really, really enjoying the, the whole gaming you know, variety. Yeah, I'd say the, the two of us, we don't really have like a, a niche like genre that we stick to. Um, yeah. <laughs> copy shot. Cool. Um we'll get into uh, we'll get into all of that. What we That's what one we of played. my teammates <laughs> on. You're getting carried. <laughs> <laughs> but today what we really want to talk about is uh is kind of uh why we why we started this show. Uh one more game. So if you look at that yeah. title Dude, we've been using that same phrase to our parents. I bet you if we asked our parents right now, hey, come come eat dinner. Oh, one more game. I promise, last one. Yeah, you uh, bet. And and we grew up in the, the transition from games where you could pause, right? To True. You remember that when you had to explain to your parents that you couldn't pause? Real yeah, life, yeah, like, yeah. Li- real life. It's real life. There's now. no pausing anymore because yeah. it's live. <laughs> so we all started out that way and then what I learned is that when you get married and you have kids, you still have to live under that same mentality. So one more game. That's, come on. It's just last one, I swear. And then three hours later, your wife is like passed out. And she's like, you said you were coming to bed at 10. Yeah. The yeah, boys. Happens, happens to Shannon a lot. <laughs> the boys. Dude, I'll be honest. I've, I forgot to bring it up. The, uh, the days where you could uh, Bogart your parents' phones by playing Age of Empires for seven years on the landline. Oh, yeah, for, dude. For seven hours, I mean. Like, <laughs> why haven't we gotten any calls? Oh. Oh, because... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we got to convert those uh, units with my priest. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know exactly what we're talking about, dude. Gaming yeah. has, it's always been a balance and it was always easier to do when you're younger, right? But uh, yeah, I promise you there are ways to adult and still have it be your main passion. Um, but there are some pitfalls that we can walk you through as we, uh, as we move on in these episodes. Uh, so we're just excited to talk about games from the perspective of uh, people who uh, aren't antisocial, live lives that uh, require a lot of maintenance and. Uh, how you can still do that and, and find happiness. So we're looking forward to talking with you guys about all that uh, here in the future. Yeah. 
excited about it. Cool. All right. I think with that, we will get into some uh, gaming news. Love that. Uh, cool. So first on the docket, guys, and uh, I know everyone's been talking about this, but we're just a little bit late, late to the game. But Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard for $68 billion. First of all, let's talk about that amount of money. Like it does doesn't I I mean I guess it kind of makes sense, but that is a lot. That like that's crazy. unfathomable amount of money. Right. Like people underestimate the difference between a million and a billion, right? Like a million, Oh yeah. A million seconds is like a couple weeks. I think a billion seconds is like 30 something years. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm sure we could, we have the Google, we could look it up, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that's about accurate. So we're just, that's just, just a crazy amount of money that we're pouring into this company. And let's be honest, you all know how much money you have paid Blizzard <laughs> and it's yep. probably not pretty. Uh, uh, yep. Dude, I played WoW for, had to have been like 15, 16 years, just paid $15 a month to to probably not play it when I got older, but I used to spend so much money on, or so much time on that game. But it's still fifteen dollars a month for sixteen years. Yeah, <laughs> like that's how much, and that's just from WoW, right? Yeah, I'm sure you've given them other money. Oh yeah, like so. That's what kind of dollars we're talking about with a company like this. Yeah, that's crazy. There are very few. So companies. I guess it, it's. Yeah, go ahead. There are very few companies in the world that could buy a company like that, right? And Microsoft is one of them. Right. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, still, it seems like a crazy amount of money. But I know yeah. it's probably not for them. Yeah, it's probably not. I mean, they're probably buying. They're already they're buying revenue that's being made every day, right? From the WoW script subscriptions and uh, all the skins you can buy in all their games. So it's well, not yeah, like they're. Especially- even now, do they own Call of Duty? Yeah. Yeah. So, dude's spending money on bundles in the Call of Duty store. Like, oh, yeah. it's, I'm sure it's just crazy the amount of money that they're making. Oh, dude, he brought it up. Make Hots great again. Okay. So, here's my dream, right? Microsoft, yes. Big I Daddy, love that. Big Daddy, uh, Phil Spencer is the, the, the head of uh, Xbox over there at Microsoft. Here's my dream. He just walks in, he's like a closet. He's a closet Blizzard fan, right? He's like, I finally did it. <laughs> I got him. And then he just yeah. goes in there and he goes, I'm going to make Heroes of the Storm the greatest MOBA ever. And it just blows everything out of the water. But that's not going to happen. Dude, but. <laughs> dude, I hope it happens. But it's not going to. I, I love that game. And you and I, when we were deployed, we spent, at, and when we got back, we spent so much time in that game. Playing yeah. Hotch, trying to get good. We even joined the league, right? Right. The uh, trying to compete in it. Yeah. If and you guys don't know, there's just <laughs> Swift and uh, myself and a couple other guys. Some of them oh. in this chat. We joined a uh, a semi pro amateur pro league in Heroes of the Storm, trying to see if we oh, can. I would uh, break. I would call it amateur. Amateur. Uh, amateur since hour we joined for us, <laughs> but uh, it was it was really bad. But yeah, dude. Uh, so here's my question, and I, th- I, th- I think I see a couple uh, questions in the chat about it, but do you think overall that this is going to be a good thing for the, the games coming out of uh, Blizzard? Because I've, aside from all the controversies with the, like the crazy rape culture that yeah. they had going on. like Sexual assault and all the things. Yeah, okay, not cool. But the games in general were kind of like going downhill before that, right? Like the WoW expansions have been pretty bad for the last five, six years. Um, the release of Warcraft 3 was just a blunder. The Reforged, like, oh, yeah. they've been kind of on the fritz for a while. So do you think this is, bodes well for them or kind of wait to be seen? Uh, I'm, I really hope it bodes well for them. I think they can put money into things that they couldn't have before, potentially. Um, and maybe redevelop. And dude, the thing that the thing that bothers me these days about games in general is the 
um, basically recreating the same game but re-imaging it, right? Yeah, like creating re- new graphics. Re-vamping. All of yeah, what like they, what do they call them? Remasters or whatever they remaster, call it. Remaster. Yeah, ex- you never really exactly. know what that means. Yeah, so I, I feel like it's the same game. They just put better graphics on it, and I don't, I don't necessarily like that. I want, I want a new game that I can enjoy playing the storyline and all the things. Right. Um, it's like nobody has so an or- I, original thought anymore. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. That's part of it. It's just kind of like movies, right? But um, I, I think it's exciting for the games as far as Blizzard is concerned that potentially we can get some new creativeness into the industry to make a new game and uh you know really go, really go for it as far as the old like warcraft 3 starcraft something like that that can really just you know go leaps and bounds above what it's been if you can put money into it i feel like it it'll be way better than it ever has before yeah i agree and you know what i think this might kind of do is uh i imagine they probably had a lot of like talented people leave with all the the controversial stuff going on yeah i'm sure and i bet you now that place is looking a little bit more attractive as a as a job opportunity for some of those people well i hope so if you're if you're a talented like developer or programmer or anything like that and they've gotten rid of that garbage culture yeah um i hope i hope it's an exciting opportunity to go work for them because it it'd be awesome to get some new new creative stuff going yeah we're uh we're new to the industry so we don't have any insider information for you guys but yeah wait not quite just wait till next week (laughs) (laughs) Uh, cool so that being said dude right after that maybe a few days maybe a week later sony goes and buys bungie right the original creators of halo were bought Crazy. Up by Sony. You got Crazy. you got Sonic on Nintendo. You got Bungie on PlayStation. You got Crash Bandicoot on Xbox. Like, what the f- is going on? <laughs> <laughs> is there no loyalty anymore? No, there's not. It's whoever has the most money. You know? Yeah. Like if you're if you were taken from the '90s and planted into right now, you'd be like, Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, who owns what? It's it's yeah. crazy. So, uh, dude, I'm kind of excited for that for Bungie just to see more money get poured into that. We'll get into a little bit more news about uh, Bungie, what they got goings on. But I'm a I'm a big Destiny nerd, so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited too. Should be great. Yeah, I think there's some that by no means was a huge uh, a huge purchase. I think it was only like I say only, but. I think it was like 600 million or something, but uh, I'm pretty sure Bungie is one of the biggest, or uh, Destiny is one of the biggest uh, titles for uh, PlayStation already when it comes to like actual players. So, dude, I don't doubt it. I I love that game. It's so well done. It's so yeah. fun to play. Just the open world mentality of it versus, you know, I I I haven't played the most recent Halo game as far as the campaign, but I love the fact that it's open world. You can kind of do what you want. There's, you know, boss quests. There's other quests that you can do. Um, it's it's just fun, and the the gameplay is outstanding. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I think that game gets a bad rap from a lot of people who didn't like the first one and the story. Because if you play it now and give it another shot, holy crap, it's it's really good. Yeah, uh, is really your good. is your uh, someone's a Crash Bandicoot champion here? Yeah, that's, Miss that's my wife. Oh. Yeah, All right, she, I have a question. She, about this. She's really bad at the game. She just <laughs> likes to play it in her downtime. It's it's horrifying to watch. Have you I played? Promise. You played the remaster one, right? Dude, so I I downloaded the remastered uh or Crash Bandicoot Four, or whatever it's called on my on the pc and i don't know i played a little bit i couldn't get into it maybe i need to give it another try but i it just what it didn't have that like you know you know when you were a kid and you played like crash bandicoot one on ps1 yeah. and it just had you even you know, remember the sounds 
Like there's no nostalgic feeling to Crash Bandicoot, the newest Crash Bandicoot, and yeah. that's the biggest problem I had with it. I was just like, yeah, all right, I I bought it. I'm I sent my money to Blizzard. I'm over it. Yeah, dude. I I was gonna ask you because I I downloaded the re reimagined trilogy or whatever they call it. Just mm-hmm. like we talked about, everyone's making new crap, but yeah. remastered stuff. Uh, and it is so hard. Dude, like, it's something changed. They like, changed something when they remastered it. Because okay, there's no I way I could have so. beat that as a kid. I don't think so. Because when I okay, so when I went back and tried to replay. Okay, this is going to date me quite a bit, but <laughs> when I went back and tried to replay the Lion King game on, like, Super Nintendo... No, that game's actually hard. It's the most impossible game of all time. Like, that game's actually the, hard. The, these games are made for kids. What are we doing? It's because uh, back like, then there was no downloadable content, dude. You had to make it hard I know. or else they were going to beat it in 10 minutes. Yeah, or else they were over it. Yeah. I, well, but also there was no like online stuff. So if they beat yeah. it, whatever, they bought the cartridge. Who cares? Yeah, you got their money. That's but dude, that game. No, that Crash game Bandicoot's a... the same. No, dude, I feel like they changed it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to do some They might have. I feel like you just fall. Like you think you're going to land and your feet just go through. <laughs> tell me if you think, chat, tell me if you think I'm crazy because that game is hard now. Oh, yeah. See, Matt understands Lion King on Sega. That game was the most impossible game of all time. Yeah. Dude. Like it did. Or Aladdin. They were I'll all. T- I'll tell you so the one. The part impossible. of the Lion King game that's impossible is when you're riding on the ostrich and you have to jump or duck from the trees. Oh, impossible. yeah. Yeah. They sent it to NASA astronauts and they couldn't beat it. <laughs> all right. All right, let's get into our next uh, our next news topic here. So I know I know you were excited about this game, and it basically broke the hearts of the entire gaming uh, community. Oh boy, what Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Yeah, has, has announced the new update, allegedly fixing a lot of the performance issues, a lot of the AI. So, uh huh. Um, so, what are your thoughts? Because I know you you tried to play it and bounced off it because it was like unplayable yeah dude so when i bought it um it was rough like i i was super stoked dude i think they announced the game in like 2012 yeah and it came out last year or maybe in 2019 or sorry 2020 um but it like when you start playing it it seems pretty cool yeah yep 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 and then you just run into glitches everywhere and so i'm i'm kind of stoked that they did you know some fixes to it um we'll see are you gonna uh, check are you uh, think you're gonna check it out i think i'm gonna maybe now that you mentioned that i think i'll i'll probably maybe dive back in and just see maybe yeah. for you know next week's just to report how it is but overall right off the bat it was really hard to play it was not fun yeah um i so. didn't try it dude but it it it's kind of got me like just kind of tired of these unreleased rushed things being delivered to us that we pay Absolutely. full price for and then they Absolutely. spend two years making good on that purchase that you made yep and then it still might not be good yeah and i think you see it on twitter all the time about people complaining about, you know, there's been a transition, I think, in my mind as far as like where um, games have come from and where they're going. Um, and so I think back in the day, they used to release a full product. But now that they can just patch things, they're, they're kind of haphazard with where they want the game to go. And they just push something out to get money. And then they're like, oh, but we'll fix it in the future. And I think Cyberpunk was kind of that, despite it being, you know, eight years from announcement to release. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty unfortunate. There are some success stories, like uh, No Man's Sky apparently is. So it, I don't know if anyone remembers the release of that game, but it was a disaster. And everyone wanted their money back. 
and then they've spent the last I think that came in, out in 2016. They've spent the last six years turning that thing into something that everyone loves who has stuck with it. So, oh, really? I haven't played that, thing, so <clears throat> yeah. I'd have to give it a try. Yeah, it was it was terrible when it first came out. Like it was built into this procedurally generated universe that had like a realistic number of st- planets in it that a real universe would have and they were like yeah it's it's multiplayer online and like oh cool but they're like but you start on different planets it's like but there's like trillions of planets in this game they're like yeah (laughs) it's like so how do i find my friends and like oh you can only find them by happenstance i was like one in a trillion planets i'm on i'm gonna find them by happenstance it just got kooky so apparently Uh, oh yeah (laughs) they made good on that so well well good i'm glad but it kind of sucks, right, that you have to deal with that. Yeah. It does. And I, I, think it's, I think it's a foul on the gaming industry as a whole that they can just release an unfinished product because everyone's so excited about it. And I, I'm not sure that I like that. Yeah. I mean, Packer Matt brings up a good point. Like, even if they don't have bugs, they're missing some aspect. Like, they released a Halo game this year that you cannot play cooperatively with your friend in the yeah. campaign. Like, that's what Halo is. Right. Like you, you sit down, you fire up the old Xbox One, you grab the, or the original Xbox, you grab the dinner plate for a controller, you turn on some <laughs> Nickelback, and you start playing Halo <laughs> with your friend yeah. sitting next to you, and you can't do that on a... 2022 release of a, of a I know it's sad it's and crazy they, and all they say is we'll release it later yeah you bet it, it's coming soon <clears throat> check checks in the mail the thing is though like they'll keep doing it because we keep paying them so I know and everyone's so stoked to buy a new game right you know especially when they hype it up on the new or not necessarily the news but like you know they send out those ads on Instagram and whatever it, the game looks dope and then you play it and it's broken and yeah. it's it's horrible yeah and <laughs> there's not a whole lot of like repercussions for them either like some of the good companies have offered refunds no. but they don't, they're not required no how are, how are we as players going to get our money back for an individual game where they care they don't care about us yeah so, so I, that's I, that's the I end guess, of it. I guess Final Fantasy fourteen was another success story, but man, I I play. You and I both played Final yeah, Fantasy yeah. fourteen. It's and great. It was, it, it was great. But I, the fact I that they really had to it. like literally kill their servers and start over from scratch to make that yeah. game happen. Uh, I know. Yeah, we live in a world of gaming disappointment. Um, but yeah, you know, and yeah, you know, we'll continue to deal with it. Cool. All right. Well, uh, look forward to seeing your thoughts on Cyberpunk, dude. If I have time, I might, I might check it out just because I was so excited about that game because I love The Witcher Three. Like that developer, I thought. Dude, same. The Witcher yeah. Three is my favorite game of all time. Yeah. So I was super excited for Cyberpunk. Yeah. So I might check that out. Yeah. Cool. Uh, my next just big tell, piece of news. Just, oh, just tell Jen it's a, a research expense. There you go. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a tax write-off. <laughs> That's right. Uh, sweet. Next bit of news: Destiny Two is my uh, is one of my favorite games. Releasing their next expansion, The Witch Queen, on twenty two February. <clears throat> so I got something, something cool to show you guys. The nerd that I am uh, purchased right. the Destiny Two Witch Queen Collector's Edition, so that's going to have some pretty cool. Uh, a little guardian uh, ghost in there and some other little mystery things. So if you don't know the storyline for that, it's all about the witch queen who's all, who's all, all about that uh, deception. So some of that stuff in there is kind of like uh, escape room stuff. You got to figure out what's going on. So looking forward to busting into that. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a little unboxing. Throw it, we'll make a YouTube channel for this uh, podcast and we'll show you a little uh, unboxing there. Uh, you, excited, you excited for that? <laughs> dude i'm i'm stoked you I, I mean you know me i i love first person shooters i love 
Destiny as a whole because of the whole open world thing that we talked about. Um, you, me, Jimmy, uh, who's in Korea? Jimmy James. Uh, I, think, I think I think he's in the chat. Yeah, he's um, in there somewhere. But we we've all played it. Um, it's it's so fun. It's so good. So I'm I'm expecting big things from the the new expansion. I can't yeah. wait. I'm excited, dude. Like we gotta we gotta go go ham in that. Yeah, for I sure. Just, I love the way the guns interact. I love the way um, raids work. Like the fact Same. that you can have like those kind of really cool mechanics, and you need five. I think is it five or six? I can't remember in Destiny, but <clears throat> yeah, it's cool just working as a team to solve that puzzle while also doing looting and shooting. So yeah, it's you have, it's so if, fun. If you haven't played Destiny in a while or Destiny Two, you kind of fell off because the original like release was kind of lackluster. Highly recommend. Get back it into it. Get in. Please there. do it. It's awesome. Just join us. Um. Apparently, you need to sing the Witcher theme song. Yeah, I know. That's no. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> he says no. Nope. Coming to, coming on next episode of one more <laughs> yeah, game. You bet. <laughs> cool. So uh, lastly, we'll just go through a quick games radar here so I'll look at uh, what's coming out over the next month we'll talk a little bit about it what you're excited about uh, what i'm excited yeah. about your cat's just going ham in the background i love it dude she's hungry and she going she gonna <laughs> kill me. all right so today actually horizon forbidden west came out i don't know if you played that uh, original zero dawn game <clears throat> but it's like dude i have i have not i haven't like messed with it at all robot dinosaurs Tomb Raider is how I describe it, and it's awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, that sequel came out today, and so far I haven't played it. This is kind of something we we gotta kind of let you some of you guys know. Swift and I don't. Neither of us have a PS5, so we not that no. we not that we won't play PlayStation games, but for now we're gonna be a little bit lackluster on our ability to talk about uh, PS5. Yeah, now. I dude, I have a PS4. But I haven't turned it on in like six years, so yeah, it's probably bad on me. But yeah, dude, it's literally sitting in the room next to me. You like can in our in our loft, just unplug, sitting in a container, keeping it uh, safe. Play for with me, whatever. Play with me. That's what it's saying. <laughs> Dust her off, dude. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of people are saying it looks really cool. A lot of content, kind of Assassin's Creed style uh, gameplay. Oh, hold would... on. Hold <clears throat> on. Come here. Oh. For you uh, podcast Pace? listeners, we have a, uh, a dog on screen with Swift. Yeah, this is Paisley. Doggo. She just joined me. What's your favorite you. game, Pays? Are you, are you asking yourself that question? Pays. Not Taze. Oh, Pays' favorite game right now is uh, playing Fetch. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. All right. What else not we got coming? I'm good at it. February 25th. This one has a lot of hype around it. I am uh, terrible at these kind of games, but I think they're, they look so cool. I just never get to what see we the got? whole thing. Elden Ring. Dude, I've never I've never played Elden Ring. Uh, I see a lot of I see a lot of hype about it though. It's the Dark Souls. It's a Souls like game, so very punishing, very difficult like combat. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's got a lot of hype on it. I think that one is gonna initially attract a lot of people, and then the people who suck at it, like me, are gonna fall off very quickly and it'll kind of just be a niche. <laughs> Play the first level and die 17 <laughs> times and just be done with it. Yeah, it's check it out if you haven't seen the trailer. Uh, in the future here on these uh, shows, we'll set up a little feed that we can watch the trailers and stuff uh, if we need to. But Cool. Yeah, nice. Same day, Majora's Mask is coming out on the Nintendo Switch. You probably Oh, that. <laughs> dude. Dude, that game is the first game that gives you, that teaches you about anxiety because you're worried I've... about the world in <laughs> I know I love that game on 64. Yeah. Great game. game was so, so good. 
I don't know if it's going to be remastered or just released onto their little N64 thing, but Nintendo is kind of uncool with how they release that stuff because you have to pay for like their old school game account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not worth it. It's like mind, a not, but... it's like nine ninety nine or whatever on for Nintendo subscription. Yeah. To, to play, be able to download the Super NES, NES, and uh, to play games that you've bought N64. five times in your life. Right? Yeah, exactly. That you you probably already own. If you're a true gamer, you probably already own the N sixty four that has it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, but that would be cool to be able to play it on the Switch, but I don't think I'll be getting into that. Uh, let's see, Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster. So I don't know if you played a lot of Final Fantasy growing up. I I dabbled, but they've been making these. I did not. These like high fidelity remakes and releasing them on PC. So <laughs> I know a lot of people who didn't get to play them because they didn't have those consoles growing up. Um, but I think Final Fantasy VI was actually final fantasy 3 in america and it was on super nintendo but that's regarded as like one of the best final fantasy games besides 7 dude you're talking <clears> above <throat> my uh your language grade. there i don't know yeah well now's your chance dude report back next yeah. week get yeah. get back into it play all the final fantasy games <laughs> yeah you bet i'll beat them all by next week cool so no, that's Manchester. that'll those are the really the big ones that'll take us through uh, the end of February, and then just real quick, I'll, I'll just quickly browse through March see if there's anything of note. Mm. WWE nope. 2K22, you is it, you ready for that? Oh, dude, I'm so I'm <laughs> stoked for that. No, I've never played any of those games in my life. So. Oh, here's one that I am excited for. Did you play play any Kirby growing up? Game Boy Kirby. I, I guess you said you didn't have NES. But. Dude, um, <clears throat> I'll tell you what. I never played any Kirby, but you want to mash me in Super Smash Bros., I'm going to be Kirby, and I will murder you. OP. Kirby OP. OP. <laughs> Kirby's not allowed to be played in Smash in my house. With <laughs> yeah. Liam wants to play him, but I don't allow him to get that, <laughs> use that crutch. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, there. He's got a new game coming out, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which looks really cool. Okay. He's like he's like running around this dystopian human world, but it's his cute little Kirby ness, like sucking up cars. There's a bunch of memes out right now. If you check them out, there, Kirby eats a, okay. a car, and so he's Carby. Carby, I like <clears> that. He could choose the best in OG Smash. Um, no, debatable. Disagree. Uh, other than that, dude, March kind of going to be kind of slow, but uh, should have some big news coming out late February or March about, I don't know how many people know about the Steam Deck. Oh, but it's going to be like a Nintendo Switch like handheld game or handheld console that you can play your Steam library on. Essentially a computer in your hand with joysticks. Sounds dope. So, yeah, sign me up hope, for that one. Hope they send us some, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Affiliates, let's get those in here uh, shipped out so we can get a, <laughs> a, a solid review of those. Basically. Yeah, that's right. We need to review them. <clears throat> All right, that is the game radar for the week of uh, episode one of One More Game. Week uh, slash month. Yeah, that's a thing. All right, so... <laughs> Now we're just kind of drawn to an end. Let's get uh, let's get talking about a little bit of what we played this week. Okay, let's do it. I'll what let you lead taste? off, dude. Would you would you spend uh, would you spend your week on gaming wise? Oh, you, you want me to lead? Okay. Yeah. Um, dude. So, um, as you know, I have played a a lot of Call of Duty. Um, again, to the detriment of my mental health. Because it's, it, I feel like it's just gotten so sweaty. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, and dude. to be fair, I'm not that good. So I, I play it for fun after work. My wife hates me because I get home from work. We say her, our, uh, hello, we kiss, we tell stories about the day, and then I come up here and I spend hours in the gulag, as they say. She must so, really love you. She does. She loves me so much, thankfully. <laughs> Um, 
But, so, played a lot of Call of Duty. Um, this week I also started playing Lost Ark. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure most people in here, if they're a gamer, uh, or just a fan of video games in general, have heard about the release of Lost Ark. It's, I'm really excited about this game. It's an MMO, and like I said, I played WoW for a long, long time. Um, so, um... I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm only level 18. Haven't really gotten to explore the abyss that is Lost Ark. Um, but um, I'm truly enjoying the gameplay so far. It's kind of, if you if you haven't played it and are a PC gamer, it's kind of like Diablo and World of Warcraft had a baby child. Um, so it's, it's fun they have, so they far. They have the same parents, so that's... That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's bad. It's yeah, <laughs> awkward. Um, um, and then the other thing that I started playing this week, I downloaded Pokemon Pokemon Arceus Legends, I believe it's called. If Arceus? I didn't mix up my words. Is that is that where we're going? Pokemon go Arceus. Pokemon Leg Legends Arceus. I don't know how to uh, pronounce it or say it properly, um, but it's it's fun. And it's different than any other Pokemon game that you played, because typically Pokemon, you just travel around in a 2D slash 3D world with the new Switch games. Um, okay, Craig said Pokemon Legends Arceus. Okay. Boom. Arceus? Or... Yeah, whatever. We're we'll say on. Arceus on this show, and let that be canon. Okay, Arceus. Um, but it's fun, because you... It's t- it's different than typical Pokemon games where you just run around and try to defeat gym bosses. I haven't played it that much. I think I put like a, two hours into it. Um, but it's different because when you walk around, you get to collect different Pokemon and you have different tasks with with each Pokemon. Um, so it's it's different and it's fun. Um, I'm interested to see how the grind goes as far as the tasks for each Pokemon because each one has like five. And I still haven't figured out all the mechanics of it, but um, like what, what's overall, a, I would what's say what's a task? Like what kind of task? So, uh, like one of the tasks is, or there's like five different tasks in each thing where you have to like catch fifteen of the Pokemon. The second one is like uh, defeat fifteen, but each oh, one gotcha. has like a a one, three, five, ten, fifteen tier tier, right? So, and then it's like catch this many heavy Pokemon or this many light Pokemon or this many fighting Pokemon or whatever. So um, I'm interested to see how the grind goes, but overall I think it's, it's really well done and I'm excited to continue. So it's, so correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't got to play yet. I want to, I want to play this one with my uh, son. If he starts acting correctly about video games, get him, get Liam up on it. So it's no longer the, uh, like turn-based battle, a lot of reading, uh, you know, you attack, I attack kind of thing. It's kind of so alive. it is. Oh, okay. It is when you decide to battle the oh, Pokemon, gotcha. but to catch but one, the, you don't have to. Not necessarily. So that it's like they do this thing where it's like this guy's a like a. Again, I don't know all the terminology. I haven't played it that much, but this guy is a an aware Pokemon, so you have to battle him to to catch him. But there's some Pokemon where you can literally just like crawl in the grass and throw a Pokeball at him, and surprise, mother- then you catch him, right? So right. there's there's none of the nest. If you don't have to battle, you don't need to, or I guess if you don't need to battle, you don't have to. Um, but. Sometimes you do, and it and at that point it is the turn based, poke the classic Pokemon battle that you used to. Gotcha, cool. So it is open world though. Like there's no path. Like you it is. Yeah, you just you just can do whatever you want, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of agree with uh, Big Eats there. Like they needed to revive that genre. <laughs> Agreed. If you look at those games, dude. They're it all is, the same. It is the same formula for the. They're last. all the same, and some of them are better than others. But I don't think it ever really got any better than. Well, there's Pokemon, two. Pokemon, Pokemon Blue, dude. There's, 
I, I liked silver and on gold. Game Boy. I like silver and gold on Game Boy too, but Dude, there's the two one, things the working thing against it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go. Uh, there's so many now. Like, I w- that's what I was gonna say. I don't know. So when I do this game, I don't know where or who these Pokemon are. Yeah, because exactly. I don't. I don't know anybody past yellow. Like Craig said, like. Dude, the Pikachu version is the limit of my capacity as far as right. like what Pokemon exist. It, so it, I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows in for. chat like how many Pokemon there are, but there's got to be pushing a thousand, which is there's no way you Dude. can know all that. Yeah, you no can, shot. You need a PhD in a fake world to know. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you actually need a real Pokedex. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, uh, yeah. Hit us. Hit us up. Uh, in future episodes, more about that game because that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, that they, uh, I'll, they I'll continue out. playing and and see what it's about. Yeah. Also, yeah. chat, please, if you guys have recommendations about games that we should try out slash talk about, hit us up. Send it. You can hit us up on uh, our social media accounts down there at the bottom, or like I said, uh, OMG Podcast GG at Gmail dot com, and you can send us uh, your thoughts, things that we could do better here. Uh, Games you want us to try out, funny stuff you want us to talk about, whatever. Dude, Terraria. Craig just Googled it. 898, 898 Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, there were 150 when I, when I was growing up. Yeah, and they, when they <laughs> had the first expansion, it was like, oh no, there's too, way too many. Not, not like this. And not only that, but some of the names, like I, we do Pokemon cards with our son, and you can't even pronounce some of these things. Like trying to listen oh, yeah. to my, trying to listen to Jen pronounce some of these Pokemon. <laughs> I love you, babe. Uh, <laughs> love you, love you, Jen. Cool. So that's what uh, that's what Swift played. I'll get into what I played a little bit. So uh, yeah, yeah, I played uh, some more Warzone. I took a long break from Warzone um, just because it was driving me. To a point of not enjoying what I was doing. Uh, just so here's here's a major problem with being someone who can't game as much as uh, I used to. Everyone else is still gaming a lot. I mean, the average population, right? So as I get slightly worse at these games because I can't put any time into them, these guys are playing all day, every day, and I just stand no chance. Like the competitive aspect of it is just, it's hard to keep up yeah. with, uh, which sucks because some of those games are really fun, but when you don't have that uh, competitive edge, which is why it's fun to play Warzone as a group of four, uh, we, you know, we get our wins. We get our wins in. Every, every once in a while. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I've been playing a little bit of Warzone, getting fired back up in that. Uh, and then I did try a little bit of Lost Ark. I plan on... Uh, I plan on streaming this game, I think, a little bit, but I've got some bold. Dude, I got do some it. bold. I got some bold predictions about this game, uh, which you may not like to hear, but I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with a guess here. Do it. Lost Ark is gonna be less. It's gonna fall out of pop culture faster than Wordle. That's my. You, that's my prediction. You think so? I do, and here's why. This then is, why don't you buy it? It's for free. Oh. Oh, Blonde Bandit, thanks for the follow. And O-B-T. Obited Bird. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. That's awesome. The best thing you guys can do to support us, really, is just share share this cast if you like us, and then uh, ah. and follow all the social Please. medias and, and, and Twitter here. We love you all. We want we want to uh, impart at least a little bit of knowledge. So this is why I think Lost Ark is going to fall off rather quickly. Okay. Because what was New World, right? That was the big hype a couple months ago. It was, dude. I bought. I I played that too, and I just was over it. And it's gone, right? Like it's. I don't even know if anyone's even playing that game anymore. I don't know. I haven't logged on in a long time. It probably hooked its people that are going to like it, but. Here's why yeah. I think Lost Ark is going to kind of be in the same boat. I think it'll do a little bit better than New World, but <clears throat> so you have 
this marketing that's been going on lately with games where huge streamers all flock to the same game at the same time when new games are released. So that's happening with this game, right? That happened with New World. Um, So yeah, all the big streamers, Asmongold, uh, they're all in this game. Dude, I was just watching Asmongold earlier. He had 100,000 people watching him. 100,000 people. 100,000 people watching him on Twitch. Somebody else played the game. Yep. Yeah, so I think the the companies like Amazon that are releasing these games, they're kind of using that marketing strategy to cause a lot of initial like influx into the into games okay uh, yeah so i saw something that said that lost ark broke or is second all time in c- concurrent players of any game on steam ever behind okay. pu- behind PUBG, of uh, players like logged in at the same time craig uh, said he had over three hundred thousand viewers a day ago yeah that's just a few like days ago insane numbers of people flocking to the game right Yep. Um, but I don't think the game is exactly what they either thought it was because it was kind of marketed more as like a MMO, which it is an MMO, but it's not an MMO in the strict sense that you're thinking, right? Like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy. Uh, no, kind of, dude, it's it's Diablo, like it's Diablo, it's, but different, right? So it's asymmetric, like. The story doesn't really seem to matter. You're kind of, you're, I don't have that. Okay. So I've only played for a couple hours so far. So take all this with a grain of salt. But when you play an MMO, you make a character, you spend time like creating what it looks like. You think about like, even if you're not role playing in the game, like you're, you are playing a role playing game and you're kind of like imagining that you're that character, right? And you're running around this world and getting involved in it. This game doesn't have that yep. feel like you're selecting a class like Diablo and you are. Yeah, you customize the character a little bit, but like I don't get that same feeling of like I'm in this world as this little character. Um, okay. Well, I'll counter that <clears throat> with dude. there's a lot of people that play Diablo agreed. for a long time to include our very good friend, Anthony, that has played Diablo until yesterday and continues to play it. So, like, why do you think it's different than that? Because I think it's different because here's, here's my thoughts of my first two hours with that game. Okay. The, me- the mechanics, the Diablo style, when it's, when it's doing that stuff, yep. the, it is so good. It is so fun. Like, it just immediately feels Agreed. amazing. But everything that I was doing that wasn't that, like, when I wasn't fighting... When I was listening to the dialogue and looking, reading the story and kind of analyzing the cutscene graphics and um, the inventory and like all the little items it was giving me that kind of start to feel like real collecty. Um, there was something left to be desired. I felt like that stuff was pretty boring and mundane. The story seemed pretty lame. Uh, okay. But the, so this is why I think that people are going to fall off rapidly. If you're not a Diablo style gamer who likes that type of game, so the people who flock to the game, who expect it to be something like World of Warcraft or right. a more traditional MMO, I think they're going to mm-hmm. play it for a little while. Uh, and when they realize that it's not quite that, where that, those aspects of it are not that good. In my opinion, who knows? This could all change after I play it more. But sure, this is what I'm basing my prediction off of. Is that to me that stuff was pretty lackluster. Um, okay, it looks great. Like the abilities look awesome. <laughs> this is what this game nails perfectly. Like you know when you're a kid Dude. and you're you're playing with like GI Joes or whatever, and you're just like. And you're just the most badass like dude ever. <laughs> yeah. That's how this game feels. Like you pick it up and you've got like eight buttons and you're just like, I am awesome. Yeah, that's one thing I that I really liked about it is you start at level ten. Yeah, you have to potentially you can play through a prologue, but at the end of it you're you start at level ten. And then you immediately have like five attacks. And it's it's really fun yeah, to just go to battle. The, pr- the, the problem I see with it is, dude, so 
You remember when we started playing WoW back in the day, right? You remember the South Park episode about WoW? Oh, yeah. Best episode when you're, ever. They're, <laughs> best episode ever. They're killing boars for hours and hours and hours. And yeah, whatever. They're getting fat and, you know, whatever. But the, the problem, not necessarily the problem I have with it, I think, in fact, I think it's one of the things that I like about it is the... There's no reason to kill mobs unless you have to, right? Because each mob, as far as I can tell, gives you two experience. And it's not easy to level up in the game. So, like, killing mobs randomly does you no good. You just have to follow the storyline. Right. And I haven't really... I paid attention a little bit and, you know, whatever. But I think that that is doing it a service as far as, like making it an MMO because you have to kind of follow the storyline. And then maybe again, I'm only level 18. Maybe at some point it branches off to where you can do your own thing and you don't have to follow a specific storyline, but I'm still fairly on early on in the game. Yeah. But I really enjoy the fact that like, dude, there's no reason to like stop and kill mobs. Just follow the quests and, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, and that can, that can definitely work like final fantasy 14. It doesn't have it doesn't waste your time, right? So this yeah. game is probably in the same vein. Right. Uh, so You're I, not grinding for hours killing stupid mobs that don't matter because you're not the the next level for whatever dungeon you're at. Right. Dude, you just go in you just follow the storyline and you're good. The other reason yeah, I don't disagree with you there. Uh, I think that could be a benefit for it. The other reason I think this may not keep it may be kind of a flash in the pan. We'll see if I'm right or not. But yep. This game is not really groundbreaking in the sense of like, there's not a huge difference in skill required to do. Like watching you True. play versus watching Asmongold play isn't going to look a whole lot different. Well, thank you for that. To, That's very nice of you. To, to the naked eye. So <laughs> when it when it really comes down to it, the the people who flocked over there thinking they were going to find something where they could like really get into the high skill uh, type of stuff, they're just going to fall right back to Warzone and and stuff like that, where they can really get their yeah their high adrenaline stuff going. This is going to be a slower pace game for than I think people are are realizing when it comes. And then the other I, thing, I agree with that. The other thing that I think is missing. And this is only from my couple hours, right? But in Diablo, you're running around killing things and there's stuff falling out everywhere with shiny colors and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, that's why you play Diablo, to see the green thing fall out and you pick it up and it's the last thing that you needed you for get, this. You get, the, you get the same thing in Lost Ark, I promise. You do? You get like a bunch of shiny loot? When you when you get there, you get the blue shiny thing and the green shiny thing. Is it on the you ground do. or is it? It is. You, you finished it's the on quest. The and, okay, cool. I yeah. haven't seen that yet, so I was a little worried yeah. about that because that's why yeah, you play yeah. Diablo. Yeah, yeah. You get all the all the nice shiny stuff to look at and collect. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see who's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep playing it. I'm gonna play it with you uh, and the yeah. other guys. Yeah. 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 I have a feeling that this game is going to uh, disappear like uh, New World did. Well, I hope not, because <laughs> I'm enjoying it so far, and yeah. I think that you and when we get the other boys on, I think we're going to enjoy running around as a as a team and doing the thing. I think yeah, it'll be I, fun. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want anyone to think <laughs> that like I'm giving it a bad review, because I've only played it a little bit, and I, I actually think it's a good game. Like, Gameplay wise, the mechanics of it are kind of something I've never seen before. So it's really fun. Yeah, um, it's great. But don't go in there. So far, so far as I played, it's it's great. Yeah, don't go in there looking for a great story. As of at least in the early parts, who knows? It may get better. And the thing you have to remember with this game is it's been out in Korea for six years, I think. Like we when we were yeah. there, and when we were in the old PC bangs over there PC bang in Seoul people were playing this game at that time back I know in 2017 so the yeah. the thing that 
I think is um, not necessarily different, but kind of difficult to swallow in this game, at least as far as uh, you guys have told me, is it's it seems like it might potentially be pay to win. Yeah, I'm starting to see. Even right, when you log in, it goes, here's some jiggly bits that you can use later at max level. And you know yeah, that. exactly. You you log in and there's dudes running around because they bought stuff from the store that is not available to everybody else. That it's like, okay, well, copy. I'm not gonna spend my yeah. hard earned dollars on a video game. So it's kind of it's tough. But to be fair, people spend money on Call of Duty War point or Call of Duty points. So yeah. you know, who knows. Yeah, as long as it, I'm I'm hoping that it doesn't make it like where you have access to s- things in the game that otherwise you would have to play for hundreds of hours just by buying them, yeah. kind of thing. If they steer clear of that, then okay, I'm I'm fine with people buying stuff that looks cool. But yeah, I, I, I mean, do think knows? that there's probably because the pay model is free uh, and it's coming from Korea, I do imagine there's probably some ways that you can get an advantage by spending money. So, Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, last thing I played this week, and this is a, a pro tip from a, uh, a married gamer. Um, I don't know how <laughs> excited my wife is about this, but I play a lot of uh, Hearthstone on my iPad because that just allows oh, me to... Oh, dude. Craig loves that game. Yeah, Craig, is, he's, he's always on there. Uh, and they got a yeah. mode called Battlegrounds that I play a lot. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, I know Pitwab played back in the day. So it's just cool. Uh, kind of a auto battler lets you have your wife fall asleep on you while you game, and you don't have dude, to. Dude, so okay, explain it to me because I've literally have never played this game before. Hearthstone. Yeah. Okay, so the main mode of Hearthstone is just like Pokemon. You build a deck of cards and you fight someone else. Okay. And at this point in Hearthstone's lifetime, it's, uh, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cards, probably thousands of cards. Uh, so they, Got it. they rotate like which cards are in season uh, kind of thing in certain modes. And so that way you only have to memorize a certain number of them. But yeah, there's, <clears throat> it's just, it's all based off of Warcraft universe. So okay. You play as a class, so mage, paladin, just like World of Warcraft. And then that yep. determines the kind of cards that you can have in your deck. Yeah, same, a lot okay. of the same characters and hots. Uh, and so you just take turns playing cards. You have mana that you can spend. Each card costs a certain amount of mana. The mode that I'm always playing is called Battlegrounds. Uh, and it's kind of like a battle royale. So you're in there with eight total people. And you each choose cards from this shared pool of cards. And it goes through a turn. And each turn you have a certain amount of money you can spend to buy cards. And then you have to play those cards. And then you'll get matched up randomly with one of those people in the game. And then your cards will auto-fight each other during that round. And as the rounds progress, you lose health. And the first per- like the last person standing wins based on how their cards battled each other. So there's some really cool like strategy intricacies to it. Uh, and unlike the main game, main version of Hearthstone, you don't need cards to play. Like everyone shares the same pool of cards. Hearthstone, yep. you have to get cards so you can earn them by playing for free. Um, yeah. But if you want to be competitive in like the constructed deck mode of hearthstone you have to buy cards to get cards you need to build the deck got it okay (laughs) so that's their business model uh, with the card game and not only that but you're not buying like the specific card you need you're buying packs of cards like booster packs uh from pokemon so it may take you a while to get the cards that you need to uh, play okay it's fun dude uh, it's on iPad, it's on mobile, so it's an easy game to just uh, kind of fill in the gaming void if you can't uh, yeah. play. Got it. Yeah, highly recommend it. So that's what we played this week. 
like you said, send us emails or hit us up on uh, social media if you got any IA, any games that you think we should play that you want us to talk about that you don't want to try yourself and you want us to suffer through. Uh, disclaimer: I will not play any scary games because scary games. Me neither. Sc- Screw that. Unless uh, unless someone wants to uh, donate that, I'm not going to play it uh, on my own nope. free will. Hard pass. Cool, uh, dude. That's probably going to wrap it up for us. Uh, before we leave, I'll give uh, everyone a chance, or I'll give you a chance to kind of hit me up with any uh, final thoughts you got uh, about the episode, about games, about anything, dude. What do you got? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, no. no the dude, other guy in the podcast. This, this has been fun. I've, I've yeah. actually... Uh, honestly, I was... Uh, like you saw in the text chat earlier, I was uh kind of nervous about doing it, but um, I really enjoyed it, and it it was fun to just sit down and BS about video games, and I I had a great time. Yeah, likewise, dude. It's good to have a awesome chat out there, you guys. Uh, yeah, give thank you all thoughts. for supporting. Uh, so you can follow us on uh, social media, Instagram, <clears throat> Twitter. Uh, like you said, I've thrown out the email there a couple times. Uh, and then our goal will be to uh, record one of these every week. Uh, but eventually the podcast will be uh, up on actual podcast sites. So Apple, uh, Spotify, once we have a few episodes. Um, our, probably, our game plan right now is to record a few episodes, um, probably not live stream, just so that we have a few to throw up there um, and get up onto the podcast. And then that way, uh, you know, our listeners can get addicted while they're on their uh, drives to work. Uh, And then our plan from there is to just start doing a weekly recording. We'll record it live uh, and then we'll get it up on to the the podcast um, databases the the following day. So right now, maybe looking at uh, Friday, but just uh, follow our Twitter and we will uh, update you on any changes in the schedule uh, as they might happen based on our our jobs and our life stuff. So we uh, still have jobs. So don't forget that. Yeah, please. (laughs) Unless you guys want to uh, pay us our yearly salaries for doing the show. Uh, We're (laughs) going to have to go to work. Yeah, we have to work. Cool, dude. Uh, Well, I had a good time chatting with you. I will, uh, I'll see you online. Yes, sir. And uh, you guys take it easy. Glad, uh, glad we could uh, brighten your day with some gaming talk. We'll see you later. See you guys.